How's everybody doing today? Woo! Good start to camp so far? Awesome. How many of you were here yesterday for Beginner's Day? All right. Well, I hope that um, we got you prepped for the weekend and uh, you can make the most of it. I'm super happy you're here. Um, WordCamp has changed my life in many ways. Many of my best friends I have met at WordCamp or we became better friends at WordCamp. So I hope that you find at least one of your people this weekend and you keep those relationships going um, because WordPress is a wonderful community. And one of the great things about WordPress is, and I'll say this all the time, is it's not just a piece of software. The w mission of WordPress is to democratize publishing because if you can't control the voice, you can't control the message. And we, in these times, it's really important that everybody's voice is heard. And so that brings us to content because if you have a voice, and you have a message, you need to provide that and publish that in some way, right? How many people here provide content or need to provide content on a regular basis? Yeah, okay. How many people struggle with content? <laughs> right? So what do you think is the hardest part about getting consistent content out? Anybody? The time to write. The time to write? The consistent part. Okay. Getting ideas. Time management. Yeah. Fear. Getting it wrong. Oh, that's a good one. You know, and I feel like I, I can do stuff, but then I just want to tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak and add to it and edit it and fix it and then. Ah, now do you think it's because you want to get that right or because? You don't want anybody else to see it, and the longer you tweak it. Yeah, yeah that could be that. Or it's just, this is so fun, you know. Oh. But, but it's not perfect. So right. There's, there's a perfectionist there. Ah. Uh, you know. Do you think having a calendar where you can move on to the next thing yeah. right away would be helpful? <laughs> Christina? Can I also say just the multimedia aspect of all the different types of content I have to do, the blog, the video, the sound, the, the imagery, the, all that stuff. Right. It's yes, it's it can be overwhelming, yes. Oh, the, the cadence of it, you know. Oh, how so pat. Like, yeah, that's really, really, you know, trying to get that balance. Um, yeah. And for me, it's for different clients and different brands, and what does that mean? Wow, yeah, so the pacing and how fast it is, because it's, it's not like you're ever going to catch up with content because you're going to have an, a new piece coming right out, right? I was going to add, it's when I said, oh, but this is fun and then blah, 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 it, it's also procrastination. Because you know you know what you're working on. Well, you finally got it. You find, okay, I get it. And the next thing, you don't know what's there yet. Right. <laughs> and it's scary. So my talk is on creating a calendar, but there's going to be a little window after for me to show you what, because every room is a little bit different. Um, would it be helpful for me to show you how I outsource my content? Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Okay. So y'all remind me that I'm going to show you that, and I'll just, we'll, we'll log right into it, and I'll show you how I do that, um, because it's really, uh, one of the things I have found, so I run an agency, I love writing, and I think I'm a decent writer, but I, there's just not enough time in the day, and, and um, what I have found for me is most effective is to have a, cre a content calendar that I can then have a content machine. Now, do I always do it perfectly? No. If you go to my website right now, I haven't posted anything in probably a month. But that's because I've been traveling and being with my family, right? So it's not, this is not perfect. And usually I do talks because I'm filling um, a hole that I need in my own life. So don't expect perfection, <laughs> but we're going to figure it out together. Okay. So let's see. Um, I've heard we have some um, technical difficulties with this. So we are going for imperfection, right? Okay, what are the types of content you need to produce? Blog posts, right? Social posts. What else? What's that? Videos, email, guides, content upgrades, webinars, podcasts, bop, 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 right? Okay, so, yep. Something like that. So one of the things we want to have in the very beginning of our content plan 
is an idea of what our content, how our content is going to perform online, and what's the ideal situation and structure for that. Okay, so HubSpot did a lot of research about what's the ideal site structure at, for, uh, for your blog posts and presenting your content. And they came up with this thing called content clusters or topic clusters. And it some, looks like this, okay? So you want to have your main ideas, one big exhaustive page, and a lot of little smaller um, pieces linking back to that, or less, less um, important pieces, right? So let's just say um, you're a web designer, and maybe one of your main pages is the exhaustive resource of web design. Why is web design important? Blah, blah, blah. You know, you get the idea. But now everything that you write that's going to be about web design is going to link to this page. Because this is where we want to drive all the traffic, this is where we want to drive all the authority, and this is where you're going to put your, your greatest um, SEO efforts, right, is to this one page. So, yes. So that would be like one, um, what we would call a pillar post or a cornerstone content. So it would be like you're knocking it out of the park resource for anybody who wants to know about that topic. Does that make sense? Okay. So what do you do? A what? An occult shop. Okay. So what are the different, the big ideas, right? So maybe... Um, Magic pebbles, right? Okay, cool. So let's say you're going to have the ultimate guide to magic pebbles, and you're going to have everything anybody could ever want to know about that so that when anybody's looking for this online, Google says this is the authoritative resource. So that sounds overwhelming, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to reverse engineer it. So normally, most people would start off with this piece of content and then build little pieces. So that seems logical, but it's way overwhelming, and I would never do that. So what I have is, like, let's just put some stones, and let's just buy the stone and paint. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to break up what the pieces of that pillar page would be. And we're going to create those pieces one at a time. And, and then at the end, we're going to put them all together in an authoritative post. Okay? Because that's so much easier to hand off six pieces of content to somebody and say, can you make this into, you know, a writer or a graphic designer? Can you redesign this into a pillar page, right? Instead of saying, can you come up with the, this? And then you're going to pull little things out of it. So we're going to do it a little bit backwards. So it could be a list, it could be, and, and normally the, what would be a really great way to do this is to have a lot of different um, pieces of content displayed throughout this page. So lists, bullet items, quotes, click to tweets, images, infographics, okay? So, but that sounds really overwhelming, so don't like shut your brain off right now, okay? Because we're going to backdoor into that. All right. So one of the things for me that makes it easier for me to um, make my content on a regular basis is to have themes, okay? So um, I'm in a great group called WP Elevation, and we have content themes, okay? So every month there's a theme, and I believe this month is profit. Don't, don't hold me on that. Yeah, I think it's profit this month, right? So um, every month... That's the whole thing that they do is they talk about profit. Well, I like to share the content of my friends who are in WP Elevation. And so what I want to do is I kind of want to sync my themes up with theirs, but not be super obvious about it. And I do this for my clients as well. So then we can all share very similar things, but they don't, they don't sound like we're copying each other. So uh, what, I, what we do is we pair that theme with something that's personal or very specific to that business, okay? So let's just say, what are you working on personally? Um, so for me, I got a lot of character flaws. 
So I'm working on some stuff. So this is some of the stuff that I'm working on. Okay, and so I think when, when I did these slides, the theme was growth. So we'll look, you'll see on the content calendar we have profit, but we're going to talk about growth here. So what I did is I combined those two. Oh, it's Sprint. Sorry. So it was Sprint. So Sprint would have been like catching up, tying up loose ends, right? Okay, so at the, for the month of April, our micro themes were Sprint and emotional management. So I went back to my... My, uh, my list of character flaws here, and I'm like, if I were going to pair a sprint up with any one of these, which one, which one would match for me? And this is, this is not something you have to do. I'm just going to give you a little window into how I do it. So I'm like, well, when I'm burned out and I need to catch up, what's the one thing I need to work on? I need to work on managing my emotions through this so I don't freak out, I don't melt down. Um, so I'm pairing those up. And so... What I came up with for a theme was the middle miles, right? So everybody gets super excited when they start their business, right? And you're like, on fire, I'm going to change the world with my business. We're gonna, I'm going to web design the shit out of everything, <laughs> right? Well, and, and I'm like, nothing can stop me. And then you get up and now um, you're growing, you're busier, blah, you know, and now things start to be a grind. You still love the work, but it's a lot, right? Maybe it's time to build a team. Maybe it's time to outsource. Maybe it's time to work on your processes, right? But this is where it gets hard, and this is where 75% um, of the businesses either fail or give up, okay? What is, what's the difference? The difference is your emotional management and managing your loose ends, right? So how do, we, how do we talk about this? And how do we create content around that? So I like to use content starters because I'm lazy and I don't like a blank canvas, right? So I need something to react against or something to prompt me. So let's just say, um, what? So this is how we use a content starter for our theme. What? What are the middle miles? Why? Why are they important? Why are they so tricky, right? So you can see immediately, you can start thinking, your brain starts moving at a little bit. Okay, it's just a jump start. Now, this is not going to write your content for you, but it will give you a way to get started, which for most of us, that's our biggest problem. It's just getting started. How to. How do you survive the middle miles? Then how to is a great for an infographic or a piece of content that's just steps or showing you how to do something. Engage your community, okay? And this is something that SiteGround does really well. I'm a SiteGround community ambassador. SiteGround par uh, partners with their ambassadors to create content. Who's in your community that can help you, that you reach out to you, that you guys can do content together? Maybe it's a guest post. Maybe you're quoting them. How do you, let's just say maybe we do it, a podcast, and the topic is how do you manage the emotional drain that follows the startup years? I, I'm sure that you could, there'd be at least 15 people in this room that could talk about that. A personal rant or an opposite view. Hey, maybe this isn't for you. Maybe it's time to give up. Maybe you're doing the thing that's not your passion, and maybe it's time to throw in the towel and do what you were really meant to do, okay? So these provocative posts are really great for like email newsletters, social media posts, right? Um, because what you want is to kind of like shock somebody into reaction. Listicle or roundup. So this is great for Facebook teasers or um, a really a blog post where you really want to just share some love with your community, reach out to them. So I did this on um, productivity tips. And I reached out to my community, WP Elevation, and I said, what's your greatest productivity tip? And I got a bunch of them. And then I created nice little graphics, put them up in a blog post, and shared them out on social media. Everybody loved it. Everybody enjoys looking at their own face and hearing their own words and being included and, and feeling like they're a part of something. And guess what? They share those things, and now you're creating a lot of activity. Come on. 
Now, you've got all these pieces of content that you just did about this, and we're gonna, we're gonna go through this a little bit slower, back, back up, so don't worry. Um, so now you take all of these pieces of content, and now you've got a bunch of content about the same topic. Now you hand this off to your writer, or you, hand, or you sit down for an afternoon and create an ultimate post with all of these pieces you just put together. Because now you've got a list. Now you've got an infographic. Now you've got a, the what, the why, the how, the who can help, why it will help, right? And it all starts with your content starters, okay? And you can do this over and over and over and over again, right? Every single month. Just start back over again, right? Is it perfect? No. Will it work? Yeah. <laughs> right? So the idea is for you to make this your own. So what, what would this look like to you? So if you, do you have a podcast? Do you have a webinar? Would you like one? Right? You, and you can start seeing the possibilities where now it becomes like not, oh, man, I've got to create content, but like, oh, where could I, what could I do? Right? So we want to take it away from being a chore and start looking at the possibilities of being able to connect with your community. So we're about, to, I'm not done, but I want to show you this link. So this is um, going to be a link to the page on my website where we have, I have a spreadsheet where I have created a content calendar for you. Okay, and we're going to look at what that looks like, but I want you to go ahead and take a picture of that if you want it. Because what I want for you is for you to leave here with all the tools to have your content planned out for the next 12 months. Okay. Does anybody want to volunteer to have their next month planned out? Do it. Come on. Come on up here. Let's do this. Yep, come on up. It's interactive. <laughs> All right. So here we go. And let me see if I can um, increase this. Let's see. Oh, it's not going to do that. Does anybody know how to do this? I'm technologically illiterate with Google Sheets. Oh, here, wait. Control plus, maybe? Oh, here we go. Okay. There we go. Can you see that? Okay. So let's say, and I'm just going to walk through this just so we can see what we're doing here. So we're going to have the theme. We're going to have all of our weeks here, right? So uh, the weeks of the month, the content type, right? So how many different content pieces do you have? How, where you want to put them? The content starters, and then we're going to talk about what else we can do with this. Okay, so yeah, let's... We'll be able to get this afterwards, right? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so let's do, let's do June for you. Okay? So June. Okay, so what, what business are you in? I'm a MailChimp expert. MailChimp expert. Okay, so would you be creating content for yourself, or do you work for MailChimp, or are you independent? Oh, no, no, I'm just the... Okay. Okay. So when you're creating content, how many different topics? Do you always talk about MailChimp or do you talk about productivity? Do you no. talk about automations? Yeah, automation, but within the MailChimp platform. Okay. Maybe. All right. And so what does that do Strategy. for the client? So it's not just that they're saving time, but what's the end goal that, that, that they want to achieve? So what I do is I do a lot of how-tos. Okay. Um, and a lot of videos. Okay. So what they're wanting to do is reach their community through... What the people that I have coming to my site want to figure out how to do X on MailChimp. Okay. To reach what goal? Get it done so they can email. Okay. And what does that do for them? Build their business. Build their business? Yes. Okay. Increase their profitability, right? Give them more time. Okay. Yes. The reason I'm saying that is because I don't never even think about that stuff. 
Right, we'll see, the, and most of us don't, but that's what makes really compelling content, right? So I'm not gonna, like, if I need to know how to do something, I'm gonna come to your website, but I'm not gonna come back until the next time I need to know how to do something, unless there's a compelling reason. Dude, that's my whole missing piece. Dude! <laughs> Okay, so you're in California, okay? That is one of our words. No, that's okay. That's okay. My, my son calls me dude, so he's like, dude, I gotta go play. Dude has no gender. No, it's true. It's true. So, yes, that's a, and that's the missing piece in a lot of people's content, right? Is that, yes, we wanna give them the how to's, but we also need to give them a why to come back. Okay. Okay? All right, so let's say. So let's say it's time management. So this gives you so much more to talk about than just email, marketing, and automation, and all of that. Okay, so let's talk about, let's make our theme for June time management. All right. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. I suck on time management. So, and one of the great things about teaching is you can always teach on the thing you need to learn. Huh? So me, content calendar is my weakest link, so I need to crush it. So that's what I'm gonna do is figure out how to teach you. So I'm reminding myself by hearing myself out loud. Okay, so now, what is it? What is time management and why is it important? Okay, so we're gonna put that down. Well, let's just say what is time management and popular techniques, right? Okay, now, so we've got the why. So now this is your topic for your blog post, and now you've got to start. You know what you're going to write about, and, and really you just start Googling stuff, right, and start making notes. Now you've got your thing. Okay, so now we're going to do why is it important and why do you need it? All right, ask a question. Okay. Why wouldn't I do time management like how MailChimp or how mm -hmm. email marketing or how automation can help you with time management? So we're going to get to that. But here's one of the things we want to do. We don't even want to push um, MailChimp in this article because we want something that's very universal. Everybody can use this because you don't want to just pull in. Nobody's going to share to their entire social network. Well, very few people are going to share. I was going to say, wait, you you would be surprised. Well, if it's CRM connected, then you can have any CRM. Like, yeah, but, but the CRM is not what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. No, okay. It's not a CRM. Okay. No way. So here's, here's the reason why we want it universal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're talking about a how to and how, like, time management and how, how it's effective using MailChimp, right? You're gonna capture people who are already looking for that. Mm -hmm. What you also wanna capture are people who hadn't even thought of that, okay? And those people, they're gonna, it's gonna be universal. And so the person, it's being filmed already. Don't, stay with me. All right, so because what's gonna happen is the teacher is gonna share it to their plumber friend. And the plumber's going to share it to another person because everybody needs time management. And, event, and it's going to land in somebody's lap who's like, I have been looking for a solution. I didn't even know this was it. Okay? So. Oh, my God. <laughs> <coughs> okay. So, obviously, we're going to spice this up a little bit, but that's your starter. Yeah. Now, how to. Okay? how to use MailChimp to be more effective with your time, okay? Okay, now. Dude, I can totally write that right this second. Dude, it's so easy, okay. So now we're gonna go who, not how, all right? So what who, not how is, is one of the things that as you get busier in business, you can't do everything yourself, right? So you need to outsource that. You need to find another person or find somebody else who has already solved this problem. You want to be the solution to that. So you want to show your clients, your visitors, um, your, word, your um, website users that you are their who and they don't have to do the how, 
right? So maybe, maybe you are a fancy consultant and instead of them having to stop what they're best at, they can just hire you to do that, right? And if you don't, yeah, and so you can say, how can an automation expert help save you time and increase your, bam, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, my God. See how it, this is not that hard, right? It's really fun. Well, actually, that makes my brain hurt trying to do that. Trying you think so? Oh, yes, because my brain is not used to working this way. Okay, so here's what you can do. And, and maybe you can pair up with somebody who also struggles with this linear thinking and just have them ask, the, ask you these questions. This is a linear thinking to me. This you don't like think so? Yeah. You think this is abstract? See, to me, this yeah. is like, what, what, why, why, how to, how to. No, I, but, would back to the, I would go back to exactly taking this chunk of MailChimp and showing you how to do it inside the software. That's how I would do it. And this is so much better. But Do you I, have any creative, like, abstract friends that also no, no, struggle no, I, with content? I just, I'll be able to do it. You'll be able to do it? Now that I, like have that my, piece of my mind blown out. Okay. Well, that's what we want to do. We just want to open the door so that everybody can has a way to create great content in a really structured way. A to B, B to C, right? Okay. So, personal rant. So, maybe who here has ever ranted online about anything? You're lying, the ones of you who have not raised your hands. Okay. So, what we want to do is we want to do something provocative. Okay, so when is, when should, when should time management go out the window? When is email automation not the right answer? Exactly. When is or the person? Not the right answer for there you go. So that people feel like, you, I mean, and you really are, you're trying to serve the right audience. And if they feel like they're not the right audience, they're free to leave, but they'll recommend it to somebody who it, well, you know what? I read this blog post. That's the person that's going to help you with this specific thing. Exactly. And it makes you seem more authentic, even if yes. you're not. Um, but, like, when, because you've all been in a sales situation with someone who's like, this is the answer to your problem. I don't know what the problem is, but this is the answer. Mm -hmm. And you don't believe them because you know every service doesn't fit everybody, yeah. right? So this gives you, you're pushing them back, but also what happens when you push people away? They're more they're more attractive. Playing hard to get um, is effective for a reason. Okay. Does anybody have a webinar or a podcast? Okay. So here's where you can engage your community. Do you know somebody who is just killing oh, it? So this is not your own webinar, this is somebody Else's. It could be either one. So this is just, this is where you engage your community. So it could be um, a podcast, it could be a webinar, it could be just an, a print interview, right? Mm -hmm. It could be anything. How do you engage your community to get their input, right? So you're kind of like hijacking them for your content, right? Okay, so. Oh, can you, on that engage, can you put hijack somebody for their content? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Is this the, the place where you might um, interview your own customers about on this topic? Who can provide some kind of the right. your product work to help them or other things? Correct, but you want to push it away from yourself and focus it on them because then they're going to feel comfortable to really go into their story and that's where you get really great content. Right? So maybe you're interviewing somebody and you're like, okay, tell me about what auto how automation has changed your life. What are you able to do now that you weren't able to do before, right? So my social media automation has freed me up so I can spend more time with my kids. Okay? That's pretty big, right? So I'm sure someone who is struggling with putting out manual newsletters or following up or all the things that MailChimp can do for them 
So it's not like helping them with their email. What's the end benefit that they get? And what's that story? Because that's a story that's going to be interesting to people, right? And maybe they're interested in the story and not the automation, but you see what I'm saying? Because we don't want to be salesy all the yeah, time. Yeah, and the, the other thing that I was thinking when I say when hijack someone else for their content is if I've been on a blog, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, if I've been on somebody else's podcast to talk about that podcast that I was on. Absolutely. So maybe this is you're on somebody else's webinar or podcast. And maybe, maybe that was a couple of months ago, and now you're going to put up the show notes and really go into a deep dive about other things that you talked about that. So this is not a prison. This should not cage you in. This should set you free. Okay? So make this your own. And if you don't want to interview people and you, you're someone who gets interviewed, just flip the script on that and, and just take that and say, how can I turn that into more content for myself? Okay? okay? So now we've got another blog post. Is yeah. that in a webinar form, format? It has to be in a webinar No, form. it's however you want to engage your community. Okay. Not everybody does webinars. Not everybody does Facebook Lives. Not everybody does podcasts. I do webinars frequently, but that's not how I do webinars. So. And that's fine. Okay. However you can take this and make it your own, the idea is to create compelling content that's going to add value and ultimately lead to more conversions for you. Okay. To create yourself as an authority, as, as someone who cares about people and not just about sales. Okay. Right? Okay. So a listicle or a roundup, this is what I was talking about as far as um, doing like, what are your know, productivity tips, right? So you can take that and make that a really nice thing. And it's so easy. Put out on Twitter, like, how has MailChimp saved you time? Or like, what, what are five things you get to do because you're not stuck doing email? Boom, 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 boom. That's such an easy ask from people. Yeah. You know, and then you just make some nice little graphics with their, pay, with their, with their face and their quote on it. Everybody loves that. And it's super easy. What would that take you? 30 minutes? Not even, probably. Right? <laughs> well, maybe not the first time, but the fourth time, like 10 minutes. ten minutes, 10 minutes. And now you've got to, Canva, cheat a little yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to be fancy. Oh. I must be super anal with 10 of them. <laughs> well, and that's something that when you don't put out a lot of content and I don't know how much content you put out, but if you don't put out a lot, if you don't put out a lot, every time you do it, it's like doing it for the first time. But if you're doing this, boom, ba boom, ba boom, oh, it, it makes sure. Yeah. Oh my God. All right. Okay. <laughs> so if you didn't put out something like, um, hey, uh, let's crowdsource, how does Belgium help you? But maybe she has a Twitter account that people have made comments on in the past and you go and harvest them? You can. I would say, I would just, I would just pri private message them and say, hey, I'm thinking about using it. Do you mind? Okay. And I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. And you say, I'll let you know when it's live. And now you've engaged. The point is to like bring your network to life a little, right? And, and also save time, because I'm lazy. OK. Now we're going to take all of this. So we're going to let me just put top tips, blah, 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 right? Um, other people's posts. Y'all remember OPP? This is not the same thing. <laughs> OK. All right, and then we're going to take all of this, and you're going to do, now you have a big chunk of content that either you can sit down with or you can hand off to a writer and say, I want the ultimate guide of how MailChimp can help you save time and give you, give you more freedom. Oh, my God. Right? Totally That's pretty God. cool, right? Now, so we want to talk about, too, what are we going to, what's this content going to do for us? We've talked about how we are going to help other people with our content. So now we're going to want a call to action. Each piece of content needs a call to action. We want to put our content to work, sometimes elegantly and sometimes with a hammer, right? Okay, so here's some different types of calls to action, and you only want to be salesy like maybe one time out of every four or five. Right, so, 
So value, 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 hammer, right? So I like to have email signups. What's that? Yeah, I mean. Twenty percent. Yeah, and different platforms, maybe. Mm -hmm. See how I'm hijacking her content right now? See, she's doing my job for me. See? Um, so we've got email signups, right? So at the bottom, and that's a very, you know, you can just have it. People are so used to seeing that, but you can have an email sign up on every page. That's kind of a given. Um, you can. She can. Look, you see how this is working? Um, you can have, um, on your social media, drive them a call to action to get them onto your blog. Um, call now, book an appointment. But you don't want to have the same call to action all the time. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you want everybody to call you all the time. It's up to you. This is just how I do it. Okay. Um, and then maybe what you really want people to do, especially on your engage one, is to comment or engage. So here's just a bunch of different. Join your Facebook group. You know, um, join your email list. But make sure you have a plan and where you want people to go. I know I've been um, guilty of creating really great content and then not telling anybody what to do with it. Yep, that's me. That's totally yeah. And it's better than not doing content at all, but it's a definitely a lost opportunity. So having this right on your calendar, this is what I'm going to do, right? And then we can do... I like to have on here also, where am I going to link this internally? Where's that page, right? That, so we're going to create the pillar post. We're going to put that up, and then we're going to go back through at a later date and link to it. And the infographic that we made, right? So maybe we'll make an infographic on a how-to. Now, that can be a content upgrade for every single page that you just done. So let's just say you've got a, you've got a down week. Who, who, I don't ever have down weeks, but let's just say you have a down, a down minute. So you can go back and even freshen up this content with your content upgrades, greater, you know, better linking structure. So there's just so much so you can just keep going and going and layering, depending on how much time. If you don't have any time, just get the content and the call to actions up there and let's just move on, right? I love my people, my friends in the WordPress community. And so... I want, I'm creating a goal this year to have my relationship building as part of my content plan. Okay? So, see, chills, right? So, here's what I want to do. I want to know who in my network do I want to give support to? Who do I want to bring closer in to me? That's such a good idea. Right? <laughs> I know, right? So, quote, so here's something, I, here's some ways I can do that. I can quote a strategic partner cite one of their resources, um, and then on my super salesy week, I just skip that week because that's all about me, right? Um, but then I have what is called sun reach moon landing. So maybe it's somebody outside of my network or somebody I've met just once and they're super fancy and I don't think I deserve them, but I'm going to go for it, right? I'm going <laughs> to shoot for the sun, but then I'm going to probably land on the moon. Um, so we're going we're gonna to reach out to them and maybe, maybe we'll reach out to them. Maybe we'll just cite their book you know, recommend something. All right. And then, um, you know, for when you're engaging, guest speaker, quote participants. So it's all just about being intentional with a spreadsheet. Yeah. Right? Okay. And now... How, you long you, how long does it usually take you to set up your monthly calendar in general? Okay. So that, to, what time is it right now? <coughs> 1140. 11.40. Okay, so that took us about 20 minutes, 15, 20. I mean, I don't know how long we've been standing up here. But if I wasn't talking to somebody, how long would that take me? Five minutes? Ten minutes? Yes. Was this process you just went through for one month's blog post? That's blog, all the different types of content. different elements at different months? So this is, this is just a schedule, and I literally just picked some weeks, right? So I made a list of all the different types of um, content I might put out in a week, right? So let's say week one, it's a blog post and a social media long form. Maybe it's just a blog post. Let's be honest. I'm probably not going to do the social media long form. But <laughs> this is an ideal, even if you only did two things this month, it's more than I probably did this month anyway, right? So... Week one, 
of the month I'm going to do for June, we're going to do a blog post and a long form social media. Week two, a blog post. Week three, a blog, or the blog post and an infographic would be week two. Week three, blog post and an email blast. Week four, your community engagement and a blog post. Whatever this looks like for your type of content. Yes? Mm -hmm. So I, I'll be completely honest, I struggle with that, okay? And I even have somebody I outsource this to, and I struggle getting it to them, okay? Completely honest. This is not, I don't perfectly execute this. What does your production look like? I would love, this would be a goal for me, to have the next quarter planned out. How long would that take me? Probably longer it took me to fix my slides for this thing, but I still haven't done it. So you, share. you do share. this on my behalf, please. <laughs> I mean, I will share. I do something similar. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not exact where it's in a um, spreadsheet, but I do try to think about like overarching things that are critical for my business. But the execution, I turn over to someone else, and we only can get to about two weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. And it is, um, it actually hits on blogs, so we do two per week, and then we do daily posts for like Instagram and Facebook. But that process usually takes a couple of hours to really like get through what are the right images, combing through, like what do we want to use, and then it takes a little bit more time to think about what those captions are. That's the part that, yeah. So like, like, you can, I would love to invite you to my meetup to display how you do that, and then we'll record it and everybody can watch it. How okay, about cool. that? <laughs> <laughs> I, hijacking another person's content. Okay, yes. So if you're planning this quarterly, do you, if there are things that come up, you know, news, all of a sudden something happens in your industry or you finish a project that you're really excited about and want to share, do you kind of just throw this plan out the window for a week and say, you know, something happened, I want to focus on this instead? Or how do you be nimble enough to do that? I think this is a great fallback for when the spirit does not move. Gotcha. <laughs> If the spirit is moving all the time, you don't need a content plan or you want to be a little bit more strategic about it, right? So for me, if I if if I'm just like on fire for something, I'm just going to I'm just going to start writing. I'm just going to write whatever I want. I'm not going to care about the call to action because passionate writing is so much more effective, right? But I don't know about you, the spirit's not always moving. And so that's what the content calendar is for. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate. Let's give a let's give Amy a round of applause. Thank you. And Amy, we're gonna have this. There's a link here, and you'll see this on um, on the uh, last page here. Let's see if I can get. Well, it's s5d.me forward slash calendar. Let's get all the way back so you can see it. Do 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 do. There we go. All right. So we've got a few minutes. Do you guys want to ask questions or you want me to show you how I outsource this? Outsource, outsource it? Okay, yes, question? Uh, just real quick. Uh, I struggle a lot with like external media. Like, how can I So I just want to be your thoughts. So this is a great uh, case study for relationship building. Are there people in your network who have great content and they have like a great resource and you're talking about it? Just link to their resource. Yeah, just link to it, you know, just say, and my friend Melanie has a great uh, talk on uh, doing proposals and link to her video, right? Or link to her talk. So you, it's not always you wanted to give out because Google does reward when you're providing more value in your content. So that's something to think about. Okay, real quick, let's see if I can log on here and I'll just show you. Where is it? Oh, it says the Woodstock WordPress Meetup, and you just got on, go on Meetup, search WordPress, and it's Woodstock, and we're on the first and third Wednesdays. So we're running really close on time. Let me see if I can pull this off. Um, Your link doesn't work. Is it not? No. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, let's, I just did that shortener right before, like five minutes before this, so um, let's see. We'll do the long one then. There we go. So go to sugar5design.com. 
uh, forward slash content dash calendar dash download. And if that's not, if that's not working, because literally I did this five minutes before, because I was like, this talk isn't good enough, so let's do this. Um, it is sugar5, F-I-V-E, design.com forward slash content dash calendar dash download. Okay, it's just a Google Sheet. Or you can go to the link here. Like, so we'll have the download right there. And if that's not working, I gave you the extra one because I wasn't sure what I was doing. Okay. So let's go really quick. Oh, no. I'm running out of time. So here's my content plan. So this is kind of an older content plan. But let's say um, here's my theme. My theme is the art of, uh, art of finishing, good project management. Okay. You can see. Can you see my can't see the content starter, right? Um, all right, so what I do is I take one of these, take this topic, take the title, and then I put it into what I, a template, and I, if, if I'm not going to write it myself, then I can order it. I like using Text Broker, and I, what I say, it's like 10 bucks to get a blog post. That's not the blog post I'm going to use nine times out of 10. It's gonna give me a good first draft to react against because when I'm really busy, starting with a blank page is really hard. But if I get something back and I'm like, what? And I like start going up, that's so much easier for me. It's called textbroker.com. Okay, one of the things, and this is probably the best thing that I can show you, this will save you super amount of time. Um, and then we'll, we'll be done here, is how to order, how to order a brief or how to create, craft your brief. Okay, can you see that? No. Yeah. Okay, so I started by work, I started writing for Text Broker years and years and years ago. Oh wait, hold on. It's going away. Oh, it's not working. Okay, so what I found is you get much better content if you give them very succinct and let them be creative. Because the professionals who write, and they do this all day long, they write like 10, 12, 15 articles a day, they want to grab it, they want to go, right? But I've seen a lot of people put like these essays, they could have written the whole blog post by the time they gave their directions. Nobody's going to write that, and only the newbies are going to pick that up. So you want the professionals. So I set the deadline for one day, because newbies won't pick that up, right? Only the professionals are, will, are willing to jump on something and turn it around in one day. So we want to say very, very quick, quickly, please do not pick this up if you can't deliver this by tomorrow. Put tomorrow's date on here. I need a short article on the title, like what is time management? Um, this is for who's your audience, okay? And who, and so this is for me, I'm a digital marketing business coach, speaking to other small businesses, right? Speaking to their target audience. The purpose of this article is to, what is, what's the impact you want to have? And then the rest of us just keep the tone up, beat and positive, use bullet points, and it's going to be for full rights and I can publish it under my name. Boom, 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 send it off. Most time you'll get this back within 24 hours. Now, if you've got your content calendar out for the whole quarter, done, right? And you've got enough money in your text broker account, you could literally order all of your content for the next quarter, right? And now, maybe you don't, ne so now you've got it all, and sometimes you're going to get a turd. I'll be honest with you. Sometimes you're going to get a turd. Um, sometimes, literally, I'm just proofing it and I'm done. And I've gotten some gems like that. Most of the time, I'm spending about 30 minutes going in, rearranging, and some of them are just duds. But okay, so I lost $12, you know? This is not going to replace a really good content writer. What this is is to give you a first draft or to give your VA a first draft to, for them to now go in or you to go in and say, okay, let me say what I really feel because what I couldn't do is, is really start outlining it myself. Just that's what I use this for. It's like a first step, an outline, go in here and you go, oh, well, this person clearly didn't know what they're talking about because they said that and I would never say that. Can I recommend? That yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's the higher end, about 100 bucks to 200 bucks. You get 1,000 words to 2,000 words. Mm-hmm. Um, Verb Leo. 
Verb Leo? Verb, yeah. Leo. Oh, nice. I agree. I just like tweeted it at, you know, there you go. Yeah, they're a little more higher end than the touch mm -hmm. these aren't good No, no, no. Yeah. I, and that, that's totally great. I, I like to have a little bit of, of my voice on something. Yeah, sure. But at some point, I'm going to get to the point where I don't want that. And I'm going to hand it completely off. Yes. So Zeris, Z-E-R-Y-S. Can somebody tweet these out? Because uh, I'm not going to write. What? Like text Zeries. Zeries. Constant content is really good too. I used to, Oh yeah. I, I used to work for them, they were really good, but who knows? Upwork. Mm -hmm. See? Absolutely. So there's something for everybody at every time, effort, and budget level. So all the way to, I want to do almost all of this myself. I just want a content start, right? All the way to, I can hand this completely off. And your content calendar will help you with that. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate y'all coming today.